Brick World Chicago is just a few months away, and fans from all corners of the LEGO community are gearing up for what looks to be one of, if not the best, Brick World yet. For those of you who don't know, Brick World Chicago is a LEGO convention that takes place every year in Schaumburg, Illinois, a city 30 miles west of Chicago. The convention, typically hosted on Father's Day weekend, provides over a thousand LEGO enthusiasts the chance to display their creations, attend panels and discussions, and network with fellow Brickheads from all across the globe. In addition, the five-day-long convention includes two public days, where tens of thousands stroll through the 100,000-square-foot convention center, taking in all the wonderful creations present. As someone that's been attending Brickworld on and off since 2010, I have seen the event transform in so many ways. And I thought it would be fun today to take a look at the history of Brickworld Chicago, the best LEGO convention. Brickworld was founded in 2007 by Brian Bonahum, an Indiana-based AFOL involved in the first LEGO League, as well as his wife Kathy and Adam Reed Tucker, a former LEGO certified professional and the man behind the LEGO architecture theme, as well as the Museum of Science and Industries Brick by Brick exhibit. Brickworld was formed in response to the growing demand from fans across North America for LEGO-based conventions. As when Brickworld was created, there was only one other LEGO convention currently running in the country, that being Brickfest, which ran from 2000 to 2009. Brickfest, not to be confused with Brickfest Live, had locations in Portland, Oregon, and just outside Washington, D.C. That being said, Brickfest was not the first LEGO convention ever held in the United States. As I remember hearing about a Florida LEGO convention that ran for a year or two in the 90s, that from what I can recall, ended with the owners scamming fans. The first Brickworld was held June 21st to 24th, 2007 at the Western Chicago North Shore in Wheeling, Illinois. The hotel the hotel was conveniently located between the Woodfield Mall and Northbrook Court Lego stores. And as seen in this photo, just as they do today, Brickworld attendees swarmed the Lego store. With 11 event rooms and 44,000 total square feet of space, the Westin was the perfect location for Brickworld in the early days. While the convention did not take up all 44,000 square feet at first, the location provided them with plenty of space they'd eventually need as Brickworld began to increase their numbers with both exhibitors and public day attendees every year. By the time I began attending Brickworld events in the early 2010s, the convention had already outgrown the Western Chicago North Shore. I vividly recall the mocks being spread out across three or four event halls, as well as there being a separate space where all the vendors were placed. The hallways were jam-packed with not only attendees making their way from room to room, but also exhibitors taking part in dirty buildster competitions, as well as set drafts. Don't get me wrong, I had a blast at the first couple Brickworlds I attended, but they were chaotic, to say the least. As Brickworld continued to increase in size each and every year, the team added two new shows across the border in Indiana, those being Brickworld Indy, launched in 2010, and Brickworld Fort Wayne, created in 2012. The Indianapolis show traditionally takes place every March, while the Fort Wayne show occurs every fall. Now, while these shows share the Brick World name, it's important to note that these shows are expos, not conventions. Unlike a convention where anyone is invited to be an exhibitor and where there are panels, discussions, and other fun events, expos are shows made up of just public days, usually put on by a local LEGO user group. If I remember correctly, lugs must put on an event for the public every year to retain their lug status. So yes, while Bricked World does have shows in Detroit, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Milwaukee, and in Kansas City, these are all expos, not conventions. This is beneficial to not only Brickworld, who now dominates the LEGO show market in the Midwest, but also local lugs, as they are able to team up with Brickworld to put on their yearly public show. But before I get too far ahead of myself and talk about Brickworld's current operations, let's take it back to Brickworld Fort Wayne 2012, where Brian Bonahum had an important announcement to make. But it is not a secret. Uh, we have signed a contract with the Renaissance Convention Center in uh, the Schaumburg area down by the Woodfield Mall 
Uh, we will have a 50,000 square foot single room display space, uh, all self-contained, uh, still attached to a really gorgeous hotel. It should be a great move and a great way to, to re-engage everybody into one room and, and get Get a lot of camaraderie back by we've lost by having things in split rooms. Ultimately, what made the Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center a perfect spot for Brickworld was its 100,000 square foot single room convention center, which now is entirely used by Brickworld. All the mocks and vendors are all in one room. And while it does get crowded, there's no longer any people crawling on top of each other like there were at the Westin. In addition, the Renaissance has a plethora of smaller event halls, which are used for opening and closing ceremonies, set drafts, competitions, roundtable talks, and panels. As Brickworld moved from the early 2010s into the mid and late 2010s, the convention continued to grow each and every year, both with the number of public attendees and the amount of exhibitors. Fantastic builds, the world-renowned Great Ball contraption setup, beautiful lug layouts, and Brickworld's recently acquired status as a meetup spot for LEGO YouTubers all greatly benefited Brickworld. In addition, the last Brickworld of the 2010s, Brickworld 2019, had a special announcement as it was declared that Brian Bonahum would be stepping down as Chief Brick Officer to be replaced by Mark Larson, who had taken over as owner. By this time, Adam Reed Tucker had also exited the company, although I'm not sure when he specifically left. While Brian and Kathy's tenure was coming to an end, they were leaving the brand in good hands, and the future of Brickworld was bright. Mark Larson is a former Legoland model builder, designer, and project manager who also worked with Adam Reed Tucker on not only his Brick Structures company, but on his Brick by Brick exhibit that was on display at the Museum of Science and Industry. As someone with deep roots in not only the Lego scene, but also in the Midwest, Mark was the perfect pick for the job, and it looked like like his professional and personal experience in the Lego space would assist in ushering in a new era of Brickworld. Following Brickworld Chicago 2019, Mark and the team put on successful expos in Kansas City, Michigan, and Fort Wayne. And going into 2020, things were looking great for Brickworld. While the first couple months of the year were quiet, Brickworld Indy was scheduled for March 21st to 22nd, 2020. And this show would begin Mark Larson's first full year as the chief brick officer of Brickworld. But before that could happen the world changed forever. See, Brickworld Indy never came. Neither did the Milwaukee show or the convention in Chicago or any Brickworld Expo for that matter. The pandemic, which began in mid-March 2020, saw the cancellation of all Brickworld events for 2020 and later most of 2021, as it wasn't until fall of that year that Brickworld returned with the Brickworld Michigan Expo. For 713 days, there was not a single in-person Brickworld show and the flagship event, Brickworld Chicago, was canceled twice. Don't get me wrong, all conventions were hit hard by the pandemic, but unlike Brick Fair Virginia and BrickCon in Seattle, Brickworld Chicago was the only convention that lost two years to the pandemic, as all other major LEGO conventions made their return after one year off. Brickworld did not. While the odds were suddenly stacked against Brickworld in 2020, we all know what happened in the end. The show weathered the storm and made it out bigger and better than ever. What kept Brickworld alive was innovation, as instead of simply waiting for restrictions to lift to throw a new show, Mark and the rest of the crew put together a series of virtual events that featured all the hallmarks of a normal Brickworld show. Mocks, the GBC, panels, discussions, and something else. The Lego Masters. Spring 2020 was when the Lego Masters TV show launched here in the United States, and Brickworld began to host panels and Q&As with many of the Season 1 contestants at their Brickworld virtual events. Now, the Brickworld virtual events were not perfect, but they were better than nothing, and I believe that in the end, they had a net positive in more ways than simply providing the company with revenue. The relationship Mark and the team developed with a couple dozen Lego Masters contestants as a result of the 
BrickWorld virtual cons led to many of them making an appearance at BrickWorld Chicago 2022. In addition to showing off their fantastic mocks, there were a couple of panel events where both exhibitors and public day attendees were able to ask the LEGO Masters all sorts of questions. Now, obviously, there was no LEGO Masters TV show here in the United States when the last BrickWorld Chicago took place. But regardless, I doubt that the LEGO Masters would have been such an integral part of last year's event without their involvement in the various virtual cons BrickWorld put on throughout the pandemic. In addition, there was a set area where fans were able to take pictures with the LEGO Masters, as well as a meet and greet spot where attendees were able to meet famous LEGO YouTubers like Emmendar Productions, provided by the folks over at Whatnot. On the topic of LEGO YouTube, Mark and the team have done a great job at engaging with the community online. Another benefit that came out of the virtual cons. Plenty of YouTubers in this space have had the chance to interact with Mark on various live streams, and it's great to know that Brickworld both acknowledges and supports this part of the community, which helps make Brickworld an exciting event alongside lugs, individual exhibitors, GBC architects, vendors, and more. Brickworld has had its fair share of ups and downs over the last 16 years, but it has been able to come out of it as one of if not the best LEGO convention. The evolution of the event has been remarkable, and while the last few years were certainly tough for the show, I'm happy to report that the event has come out on the other side, bigger and better than ever. Brickworld Chicago 2023 looks like it'll be another record-breaking Brickworld, and I can't wait to be a part of it.